Welcome to Crojo Corner. My name is Laura, and today I'm going to show you how to make a beautiful wall hanging. Now, my daughter's best friend is getting ready to go off to college to a dorm, and her dorm is going to be decorated with purple. And I thought, what better thing to do than to make her something pretty to hang on her wall? I'm unable to crochet right now, so I figured a wall hanging would be really easy to do. And I've done quite a few of them before, and I'll show you a couple of them right here. Now this is the first wall hanging that I made. My husband uh, picked that stick up out of our backyard. It fell out of our neighbor's tree. I have some like real thin, um, like mint colored uh, curtains in my living room that match this light color here. So I thought that looked real pretty together. This took a little while to make, but not too bad. And I just was really proud of it. And I have it hanging in my foyer. This is another one that I made around the same time. And this is just a um, embroidery hoop and I strung up some string around it and then I added some braids and other things to it in all different textures of yarn. And I really like this. This is hanging in my hallway. And this one right here I made for my daughter because it matches her room. And this has a lot of really pretty different textures in it as well. And it has a little stick that we got out of our yard. And it's really pretty and it's kind of long. So I'm going to do one that's about this size today, maybe a little bit bigger. So let's go ahead and get started. Now let's take a look at the materials that you will need. Now I chose a stick out of the yard that I could use, or if you don't have a stick, you can always use a dowel rod if you prefer a cleaner look. But I really like the rustic and natural look of a stick out of the yard. And you know, you can go to a park and uh, gather up some sticks if you don't have any trees in your yard. And I just have like a little bucket of them saved in my basement for when I want to do projects like this. So just get whatever length stick that you like. And you know, you can always saw it off if it's too long, but I just kind of like to find the ones that are rustic on the ends as well. And then you can also use some of this uh, really pretty twine. This is a uh, jute cord. I got this roll from the Dollar Tree. You could use this if you like the more rustic look. And my daughter's friend's room is going to be gray and purple. So I kind of gathered up a bunch of different shades of gray and purple. And this I recently got at the Yarn Crawl at Yarn Hollow in Crete, Illinois. I thought this was beautiful Malabrigo wool. And I'm going to incorporate this in for sure because it's so pretty. And then I've got these grays that I'm also going to include. And this is a nice sparkly uh, silver gray. And then I also have a sparkly silver purple. Then I've got this textured little white. Um, I don't know what you call it, but I got it for 50 cents at Goodwill. And I thought this was kind of unique as well. It just adds nice texture. And then here's some um, Karen Simply Soft Lavender. I might just throw a few pieces of that in. And then I also have some I Love This Cotton from Hobby Lobby. So let's take a look on how to assemble this to begin. Now the first thing that I'm going to do is tie some of this white cotton yarn onto each end of the stick to make it hang because I'm going to be working on this hanging up. And since I have frozen shoulder, I cannot lift my arms up very high. I am going to leave this long so that I could reach it better, but then I will cut it off at the end and then I'm going to replace it with the jute cord because I think that looks nice and rustic and it goes along well with the stick. But I just really like to make this comfortable to uh, work on by hanging up and I'll show you my setup in just a second. And I also forgot to mention you do need a pair of scissors as well. So this is pretty long. I'm gonna go ahead and cut this string off and tie it to each end of the stick, leaving about I don't know, an inch and a half or so on either side. Now, like I said before, this isn't part of the design. This is just so that you could hang it up and work on it. So you don't have to use, um, I love this cotton. I just happen to have this laying around. You could use any kind of um, old uh, yarn you have, any scrap yarn that you have. So we're just gonna go ahead and tie this on. Now I have one of these little hooks here that you can hang your hangers on or whatever like that. I just put that on my closet door and then I made it hang low enough to where I could reach it without having to stretch my arm up real high because it doesn't work that way. I do think I will go ahead and put the jute hanger on here as well because I do like to um, 
cover up the ends when I'm wrapping the other yarn around it so it doesn't stick out. And then when we cut this off, it'll already have the other hanger on it and we'll be good to go. Now this cord you don't want nearly as long because you know you are just gonna hang it by a nail on your wall and maybe just a few inches longer than the length of your stick and go ahead and cut that off. And then I'm just going to tie it on to each end here. And I'll tie it on right before the white cord. Like I said before, we will be covering this up with the yarn when we wrap it around. So I'll just go ahead and do that and I'll meet you back when I'm done. So now we need to determine how long to make the loops on either side. And I like to leave plenty of room for knots. So I'm thinking if we knot it up, this should be pretty good because then we can do another one over here. So let's make it this long. And I don't even usually measure that much. I just kind of hold each thread up to the other and then cut it. And then I use the knots to adjust the length once I am tying them on. So we'll go ahead and do that. And then once I get these tied on, we'll hang it back up and then start working on it, adding the pretty different colored uh, yarns and different textures and stuff like that. So I just like to do a double knot here. And like I said before, we will be working over this thread so it doesn't come loose. And we don't want this exactly in the center, but just a little bit before the center. So, you know, you can kind of eyeball it. And what's nice about these is that you can slide the loops around and, uh, you know, adjust it to make sure that it's even. So there's your first loop. And then we will do the next one. I'll do the next one and I'll be right back. So now I have both of my uh, threads tied on to add the loops to, and I wanna make sure that these are both like the same uh, length when you hang them down. So make sure you kind of pull it down with your fingers and they're hanging about the same length and make sure that there is a small space in between both of them and about the same amount of space away from the end so that it ends up being balanced. Okay, so now on to the fun part. So I've decided that I would like to have my yarn to hang down about 20 inches past the branch. So that means that I need to cut each piece of yarn to 40 inches because you're going to knot it up and uh, double it over the um, little yarn strands that we just tied on. So if you wanted to have a longer wall hanging, say 24 inches long, you would have to cut 48 inches of yarn for each piece that we're going to add to the wall hanging. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut 40 inch pieces because I wanna have it be 20 inches long. And I'm going to start off with just a basic uh, light neutral color as the base for these two side pieces. And I'm gonna go ahead and cut a bunch of that and then I'll be right back to show you how to attach it. And one little tip that I like to do is I just usually cut my first piece you know, along my tape measure. And then I'll just go ahead and hold the yarn up to the next piece and measure it out that way. It's not going to make that much of a difference if you're a little bit off. You know, I just kind of do it like that. It seems to work way quicker for me and um, it gets things moving right along. Now I have a handful of pieces of my thick yarn cut to 40 inches. Let's head on over and I will show you how to attach it. Here's my yarn and then I like to start off in the middle and what I do is fold this in half and then I place it with the loop behind the uh, loop here and then I just pull these two strands through. And I believe this is called a lark's head knot. I am almost positive that's what it is called. And that is like a, um, you call it macrame term. And so what I like to do also is whatever I do to this side, I do to this side so it ends up being balanced. So I'm going to go ahead and do that to this side now. I folded it in half and here is a loop. And then I'm going to place it around over the white string and then pull this through and tighten it up. And we're just going to keep repeating this on either side You'll see here, I'll go ahead and just do um, three on this side 
and then I'll make sure that there's three on the other side. So I'm just gonna keep going back and forth, adding the 40 inches of yarn in the lark's head knot to each loop until they are completely full. Now here you see that this is sticking out. Once we once we start filling this in, we will kind of hold this down with our lar lark's head knot and then you won't see it anymore. And the same thing with this one. I just like to hold these down nice and neat. And I will even do that with the jute thread, but make sure you don't incorporate this long white thread if you end up doing it like me, if you end up having it lower to your um, arm level. Make sure you don't connect this in because you don't want that. You'll end up cutting this off. This is just to help you out. So we've got two here and then three on this side. Now I'm gonna go ahead and keep filling this in and I'll show you what it looks like when I'm done. So now here is where I will start to hold down the extra little tabs. I just kind of hang on to it with my thumb and pull this through to hold it down. Like that. And then I'll put that up there and then I'll keep adding on more to keep holding it down. As you can see here, I have tied on all of the light gray yarn to the white string that I had uh, tied on. And now I'm going to do one more loop and we're going to tie that on right to the middle, just like we did here and here. And you just want to make sure that it's perfectly centered and you can always slide it around, but then you'll tie it on with a double knot because also we will be hiding these little tails like we did before. Now we have our top loop tied on and I'm going to go and cut some of the other yarns that I have, all the different colored yarns. I'm going to cut them in 40 inch lengths and then we're going to loop them around this loop just like we did here. Once I get that finished, I'll be back. Here I have all of the different 40 inch lengths that I'm going to add to the wall hanging. So let's go ahead and you can watch me get started. Now this right here is the same yarn as the uh, main body of the wall hanging. And I'm going to put that right in the center and I have five pieces of that cut so that it will have two pieces on either side and then there will be one piece right in the direct center. So I'm going to go ahead and add these and then we will add the rest of the color pieces. Now it's time to add a little pop of color. If you can see, I have the center portion matching the outer portion. And now I'm going to add some of these little uh, purple sparkly thinner strands of yarn on either side of the middle. And that's just going to help start to bring out some of the color. Now I'm not going to add all four of these strands. I'm going to save two of them for later. And this is the part that I really enjoy is just kind of figuring out what looks good together. I might, you know, put something up here and decide I don't like it. And then I might change it around a little bit. Now I have some silver. Let's go ahead and add a silver on either side just to keep the sparkling theme going and to keep the silver gray theme going. And this is so fun. I love to make these. I was actually selling these on Facebook to my friends for like $40 a piece, and they really don't cost that much money. You just use the extra yarn that you have in your stash. So let's add some of this beautiful Malabrigo yarn that I got the other day. I can't wait to see how pretty this is. I love this color. It does have sort of a pinkish cast to it, but it does have purple in it, and I think it looks beautiful. And I know that my daughter's friend will like it too. I mean, who doesn't love this color? I think it's more like of a magenta purple. It looks really nice. And then I'm gonna go ahead and I have some of this like zebra style looking yarn. I'm gonna put that on either side.
And this is coming along really pretty. And it's nice because you really don't have to go shopping for yarn for this. You can, as long as you have the thick size five yarn, you can uh, totally, you know, just go through your stash and use it. So now I'm gonna add some of the uh, Karen Simply Soft. I think that's what this was. Some lavender. And I love to add just different textures and different colors, different styles of yarn. And just always make sure that you go back and forth so it stays even. And then let's add some of this little fuzzy yarn here. Just to give it a little more texture. These are so fun. You can make them any shape, any size. I mean, for real, you can make a big one. I have a huge branch in my office that I have set aside that I wanna make a, um, a wall hanging for over my bed. My husband found it at work and he was like, you know what, I had to stop and pick that up. I know you could do something with it. But that made me feel pretty good too. Okay, and let's go ahead and try another couple pieces of this purple. This is coming along very quickly. Once you get the main base down, then the rest of it does seem to move along really fast. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish this up and then I'll meet you back when I have it completed. I have now added all of the different colored uh, pieces of yarn. And then I also braided a section of the uh, base yarn on either side, just to give it some texture. And the thing I'm going to do next is going to really make this look awesome. I'm going to take my little steamer and steam this yarn so it lays nice and straight. And then I'm going to trim the bottom of it to make it nice and sharp on the edges. So let me show you the steamer that I have. This right here is just a little um, handheld steamer. I believe this came from Amazon and it's really easy to use. You just put some distilled water in there and you turn it on and then you steam your piece and it comes out so much nicer. And I'll go ahead and link one of these down below in my description box. When you're steaming your wall hanging, just kind of gently go over the top now I am holding onto my phone so I can't really run my fingers through the yarn here, but you wanna run your fingers through the yarn as you're coming down slowly with the steamer and let it all straighten out. And I'll show you what that looks like when I'm done. I also wanted to mention that you should also steam the back of your piece so it's nice and straight and your yarn is all laying flat because the next thing you want to do is trim it. Now this is looking better already just because it's been steamed. And now I'm just going to take my scissors and kind of just cut the edges into a point here on the bottom. And then I'm going to remove the extra white string up there and we should be about done. And here we are, it's finally finished. And doesn't it look beautiful? This lighting is not doing it any justice but oh my goodness, it is so pretty. And it looks pretty good with this gray wall as well. I just love all the textures and the braids just kind of add just a little bit of something. You could also add beads to it if you'd like. It looks so much better once you steam it and get it all trimmed up and everything and it's not that hard. And I hope you enjoy making one. Thanks so much for watching. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Thanks for watching. Have a great day. Bye. Thank you.